In this video, I'm going to be talking all about Google Customer Match. I'm going to share how you can best leverage this option within Google to your advantage for your Google Ads lead generation campaigns. I'm going to be talking about what it is and how to go about using it. So let's go ahead and dive in here. So what you're seeing on the screen is the Google Ads help document for Customer Match. And essentially, it's explaining what Google Customer Match is. There are eligibility requirements, so not anyone can just participate in it if you're an advertiser. So you need to be aware of that. Um, essentially, what Google Match is, in the most simplest terms, is taking your offline data and essentially marrying it with your online strategy within Google Ads. And to break it down even more simpler, it's taking your first party owned data and uploading it into Google. So say that you have a list of, let's say 5,000 email subscribers that you've accumulated over the last 10 years uh, from some type of email opt-in or some type of lead magnet that you've been using. And these people have opted and given you permission to be on your list. Um, so you can also leverage this list to also target them within your Google advertising. Um, so it's not just email subscribers. It could be, let's say if you are a doctor with um, patients and you have, let's say like 10,000 patients over the last how many years, and now you want to run some Google advertising to re-engage with these patients, um, you can do that and you can leverage that using customer match. Um, as long as these people have given you permission to use their information, it's completely fair game and you will have to agree to that within Google Customer Match that this is all your own first party data. And you can leverage this tactic to target these people across Google Ads search, YouTube display, and um, shopping, um, and Gmail. Um, and I think also within um, the new uh, Performance Max as well. So it's a really great way to, to leverage your existing list to target your either existing customers or previous customers if you have a service that you can resell to them or a product that you can resell to them. Leveraging Customer Match is a great way to, um, to engage and a great strategy. Um, so essentially, to actually be opted into Google uh, Customer Match, you need to um, be, and let me go back into here to give you the requirements. So you actually need to meet certain requirements in order to um, use the Google Customer Match feature. Not any advertiser can just use it. You have to be with a good history of compliance within Google. You can't have been suspended. You have to have a good payment history. Um, and then on top of that, here are some other things too. All policy compliant advertisers um, must uh, be, can use customer match and similar audiences for customer match in the observation setting and for exclusions. So you can actually use this list to exclude your ads from serving to customers. So that could be another strategy here. Um, something else that you will definitely need to um, hit in terms of requirement is 90 days of uh, Google Ads history and more than $50,000 worth of lifetime spend. Um, so keep that in mind um, as you are considering potentially using this. If you're hitting all these criteria and eligibility, then you'll have no problem getting started um, and you'll automatically have the option to use customer match. And I'll show you exactly how you'll be able to see if you can leverage customer match or not based off of if you hit these requirements within Google. It's not something that once you hit 50,000, it's going to automatically say it. It's going to be just an option that's going to start being available once you hit that threshold or the threshold. Okay. So Collecting the customer data, I'd mentioned that these are the ways that you have to collect your customer data in order to um, be eligible for customer match. So here are some examples. You collected this from a customer who had purchased an item from your website. Um, you collected through uh, this information from a customer who registered to receive marketing messages from your apps. So they ha must have opted in. 
Um, so that, that is another option, or you collected information from a customer who signed up through your loyalty program in your physical store. So these are really important in terms of like how you collect your customer data. It's not something that you can buy from another third party source, um, because that would be in violation of the customer match policy. That's not your own list. Even though you purchased it, you didn't actually, um, you didn't actually, uh, follow these guidelines in order to get this information. So um, here's some other things. Um, I'll also drop a link to these help articles in the description below so you could check it out. And if you're finding this video helpful so far, I would love it if you can give it a thumbs up as well as please subscribe to this channel. And I'll go ahead and now show you how you can leverage a Google customer match and get that all set up for your campaigns. Okay, so within the Google Ads interface, uh, when you log in, you'll want to go to Tools and Settings, and then you'll want to go to Audience Manager. Um, so this is essentially where I'm at right now. Um, and then you're gonna see this blue plus button. Click on this blue plus button, and then you will be able to see all these options, and you'll then select Customer List. Now, this is only if you are eligible. If you're not eligible, and you haven't hit the requirements, you will most likely not see this option, or if you do see this option and you try to upload a list, it's not going to allow you to. Um, most of the time, it's going to be the option where it just doesn't show you anything, um, but I have seen instances where uh, they will still give you the option and then you'll try to upload it and it says that you don't meet the requirements yet. So keep that in mind. Um, so once you um, are in this uh, view, you can go ahead and create a segment name. In this case, I'm just going to call it sample customer match list. And then you will have the option to upload emails, phone numbers, and or mailing addresses, upload user IDs, mobile device IDs, and customer data from data platforms. Um, the way that I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this is the most common way and it's to upload emails, phone numbers, and or mailing addresses. If you are a business owner, you will have this information, uh, but it will be a lot easily available than these other options here. But the challenge that you're going to face is getting it all organized in the right format to be uploaded so that Google Customer Match can read all the content and data and then take it and go find all these users across the Google universe so that it can then decide how it's going to target them um, based off of the way that you set up your campaigns. So that's essentially what it is. It's you're uploading your audience list and then Google is then going to hash all the data um, uh, in order to make it all confidential. They're going to identify all these people um, and then based off of the settings that you have within your Google Ads, uh, search, shopping, display, YouTube, it's going to then target them or exclude them depending on how you set up your campaign. Um, so like I mentioned, the challenge that you're in to face um, is probably going to be getting the data and then organizing it in a way that Google is going to be able to understand it. And Google has a template here that I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, let's go ahead and show you that. And I'm going to show you that it's, you have to upload it in a CSV file. And essentially, um, the format is going to be, it doesn't matter what order it is necessarily, but it has to be uh, formatted like this. So email, first name, last name, country, zip code, email, again, um, zip code. So I think that this second email was not necessary, but I think it was just to show that uh, you can have more than one email. And then there's zip code, phone num phone, and phone. Um, so I think Google just meant to show that you can have different formats of it ultimately. Um, so open it up so you can essentially see the formats in which it accepts the data is going to be, um, it's going to vary. So you see for like email, it has to be something at something.com. Um, the email, the first name, it doesn't necessarily have to be capitalized. Um, you can put it in lowercase. 
Um, and then country, you need to make sure that you're putting the right country that they belong to or that they're in. Zip code, email, um, zip again, phone number and phone number. Do you see how this zip code looks different from, or this zip code looks different from this? So that's because it's a different country. But for the phone number, do you see how here the, um, it's like one dash and then this one doesn't have dash and then this one has the parentheses around it. So Google can accept any one of those formats, um, but it just wanted to show you the different uh, options that you can upload it. Um, so just read through these guidelines, make sure that you are um, hitting that. At the minimum, you must provide your first name and last name if you want Google Ads to match, uh, to create a country and zip code match. Um, the more information that you provide in your CSV, the better. Um, because I've had a situation where I uploaded a list of 2,000 uh, people, um, included first name, last name, uh, country, zip code, um, and their address, but we didn't have their emails and we didn't have their um, and their phone numbers. So our match rate was so low. It was only like a 14%. Um, so it's extremely, extremely low. I would love like to see whenever I match to be at least in like the 80% range. Um, so once I saw that issue, I went ahead and I had asked the client to give me the phone number and, um, an email. And then from there we went from like 14% match rate to like 80% match rate. So the more information, the better, um, ideally, um, ideally email and phone number, but if you have address, then that's great too. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, actually I did say that this had to be, this could be capitalized here. It says it can't be. So just wanted to correct myself on that front, lowercase all characters and remove all extra spaces before between email. Yeah. So yeah, no capitalizations on the names. Just read through the, um, just read through the template requirements and then you can go ahead and follow that. Here I have an example of what a customer match list looks like. I have removed the, some sensitive information so you can't actually see where they live and what their uh, information is. But this is what allowed us to get a 80% match rate uh, for one of my clients. Um, and then also another really, really important uh, thing to note is you have to have at least 1,000 users to even um, to even get your uh, even leverage the list um, because if your list is too small it's just going to say your list is too small within Google. Google says you need at least a thousand but in reality if you have a thousand it's most likely not going to match to all 1,000. There's going to be some missed people um, because Google is not going to be able to identify every single person on the list. And plus not every single person has like an internet identity to be identified. So that, um, that could pose a challenge. So Google says a thousand. I personally recommend at least 2000 to 2500, just so that if you do lose some, you'll still have enough people on the list to get started and leverage the list to your advantage. Um, so that is another thing to remember as you are getting things started. Yeah, so this list had 21,000, so we had no issues with that. Um, so 21,000 and then we had an 80% match rate. That was a really, really good match rate after we got the emails and phone numbers. Okay, so once you have that list in this format, um, and of course making sure you're filling out everything here, um, then you will go into your Google customer match, um, audience, uh, manager, and then you will drop the file in here and then save and continue. Once you do that, and I'm not going to do that here for privacy reasons, but once I drop the inf once I drop that information here and save, what's going to happen is it's going to take Google some time to start figuring out um, the match rate, it's going to try to match and identify all these different individuals um, and hash them so that they could uh, be protected for privacy reasons and then would be able to um, start using in terms of either like excluding or targeting in your ads. 
um, but that's essentially um, how that works. Essentially, it could take, um, I've seen, I've seen it take anywhere from like one to like, depending on how much data you have, one to you know, four days um, to get all the information all uploaded. Google will give you a timeline on like when it will be finally done matching everything. Um, so just depending on how big your list is, the list that I had with 21,000, I think it took about three full business days to get that thing going in terms of uploading and then matching and then identifying that there was an 80% match rate. The match rate will also depend on the network. So it might match to more for YouTube versus display versus search versus Gmail. So keep in mind, it's not going to be um, an even match across the board. Um, so yeah, once you have that all uploaded and um, Google is officially done matching, you can actually go and view um, your uh, customer match list. It will appear here, right under here, under segments, and it will show you how big your lists are. So right here. Um, so of course, if it's less than a thousand, it's not even going to allow you to serve. It has to hit at least a thousand. So if, if you are less than a thousand, it's just not going to let you attach it to any type of campaign. But once you do have this list, then you can start using it to exclude or to target onto your campaigns, whether in observation or targeting mode. Um, and that, you know, if you would be interested in learning how you could actually attach them to your campaigns in different use cases, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I would love to create another video um, in detail showing you the different use cases for Google Customer Match. This video was more of an introduction, um, introducing you to what it is and how to upload the list. Um, next video, I can go ahead and create and how to on how to best leverage it for your campaigns. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. And I'll go ahead and drop all of these resources in the um, description so you can check that out. And I would love to see you in the next video. Thank you so much.